In this video, I'll show you an alternative way you can add audio to your slide that's much more interactive. A number of years ago, I had a client who was looking for a way to give their learners control over the playback of audio, but they didn't want to use slide audio and they didn't certainly wanted to use object audio. And at the, unfortunately, at the time, I didn't have a solution for them. But since then, I've stumbled across this solution that I'm going to share with you today. So here I have an MP3 file, which is the first chapter of an ebook, or it could be some audio recording that you've prepared uh, specifically for your e-learning course. And again, you want to give learners control over the audio playback. You want them to have other things perhaps on the slide that work independent of the audio and this is just like listening to an ebook or an audiobook if you will um, while they're on their e-learning course here so what i have here also is a file that i've called audio.html it is a very simple html document i'll open it up in notepad and show you what it is it's you know the basic structure of an html document and i've included the command to include the playback of the mp3 file, which I'm going to combine together into a single HTML zip file here. So I'm going to go ahead and go close that. And we're going to select both of these two objects, the HTML and the actual mp3 itself. And using your favorite zip tool, uh, in my case, I use 7-zip. And I'm just going to zip those up into a single package. In this case, it called it desktop.zip. It doesn't matter what it's called. It just called it that because I was doing this on my desktop. But I can literally take this file now and drag it to my Captivate slide. And what it produces is basically a little audio interface that you can you know, provide instructions to your learners on how to use. If you resize it, of course, it will just adjust itself and we can go to the properties inspector and maybe turn off scrolling and get rid of the border so it looks like it's just a single object there and we can preview this now and see how it works so let's go ahead and preview in html5 so as you can see here we've got some controls and again this is all independent of the playback of your normal adobe captivate project so let's go ahead and hit play the Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, Chapter 1, The Cyclone. And we can pause it. We can use the scrub bar to go to any portion within that MP3 file. You'll see information right here about where you are in the audio file. You can even adjust the volume so you could lower it or decrease it. And your learners will be able to click on the ellipses here and actually download the file if they wish to use it offline. I kind of like to think about this in the same way that event video is to slide video. Normally when we add audio to a slide, it runs the full duration of the slide. But we often will use event video if we, first of all, A, want to give our learners controls that they can control themselves. But also we might not always want the uh, video to be synchronized with our e-learning project. Well, now we have a way that we can have audio that isn't in sync with the rest of the e-learning project and completely runs independent. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.